Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about on-demand writing, which is a particular type of writing. It's often used in college and it's used on exams. And we're going to look at strategies for responding to the prompt. And the prompt is the question that you're writing on. I'm going to show you exactly how to go about this so that you'll be successful every time. What we're going to talk about in this presentation is on-demand writing and what it is, uh, who uses it, how it's different than multi-draft papers, and then, as I said, strategies for assessing or, and responding to the prompt. It's called the ABCDs of on-demand writing. Okay, so what exactly is on-demand writing? On-demand writing is a style of response in which you're given a predetermined question or scenario, and that's called the prompt. And then you're asked to write a response in a set period of time. So in other words, you have to write right now and that's how it's different than the traditional essay or multi-draft paper you compose it on the spot and then you're done um, the prompt can be on a variety of topics it may not even be in an English class it could be in a science class almost any type of exam could have this type of question it could even be on a job interview so the prompt can be on a variety of topics but the response strategy will always be the same and I'm gonna walk you exactly walk you through exactly how to attack that prompt but let's talk about who uses it. As I said, state mandated assessments, SAT, if you live in Oregon, it's called the Oaks exam. Um, college entry exams, including placement exams, and increasingly many employers. So according to the National Commission on Writing in 2004, I know that's a little old, companies spend $3.1 billion annually to remedy writing deficiencies. So more and more employers are actually using this style of writing when they make their selection at an interview. And so it becomes increasingly important to be good at this style of writing. So how is it different than multi-draft papers? Basically, in multi-draft papers, you have an opportunity to review and revise your work, and you have the chance for peer review. With on-demand writing, you have little time or no time to refine your argument, and you have up, you have no time to rethink it. You have to you basically have one shot. So that that's why it's so important that you have a plan. It's not a free write like in a creative writing class. You get one shot, and you have to get it right the first time. But if you apply the strategies I'm going to show you, um, it should be a much much easier task. So here they are, strategies for assessing and responding to the prompt. It's called the ABCDs, which is just a mnemonic device. Uh, it's a way to help you remember it. The first part, attack the prompt, brainstorm possible answers, choose the order of your response, detect errors before turning the essay in. And this ABCD, credit where credit is due, comes from Kelly Gallagher. Uh, his approach isn't actually original, but his mnemonic device, the ABCDs, I, I really liked it. I thought it helped, it certainly helped me remember. Um, the order in which to do these things. So I'm going to walk you through each one of these steps very carefully and by the time we get to the end of it I think you'll have a really good idea of how to how to deal with these prompts. So the first part, attack the prompt. Well, What does that mean? Uh, that means the first thing you have to do is you have to read the prompt and a key part here is don't get distracted by verbs. There's going to be a lot of verbs in the prompt and we'll look at one um, and you can, it can, you can get confused because you start thinking about all of the um, details in the prompt and you can overlook what you're actually being asked to do. So the first part is read it and don't get distracted. The second part, cross out what you already know. And again, I'm going to show you what this looks like. Third, circle words asking you to do something. Then draw an arrow to what the word is asking you to do. And then rewrite the prompt listing, listing what you need to do and then you're not going to need the old prompt anymore. So in attacking the prompt you're basically trying to refine and narrow what's being asked of you and then you're going to rewrite it and that will help you um, to the next step. So let's look at it. I've written the key points up in the right hand corner there so we're going to go through it. But here we've got a writing prompt. This is from um, a college entrance exam. So start with read the prompt and let's not get distracted by the verbs so here's the prompt all humans make choices or decisions daily some are important and some are not we decide to study for tests we decide who, who to ask on a date we decide what to watch on TV we decide to stay in or go out on the weekend sometimes decisions can change our lives write an essay in which you discuss an important decision you have made in your life explain the decision and how it affected you be sure to support your story with details and examples okay first part we read the prompt tried not to get distracted by too many of those details second cross out what you already know well we know we need to write an essay because that's what we're doing right now so we can just cross that out what we're trying to do here is delete words that um, aren't important to us anymore so that the prompt becomes a little more clear to look at. So we know we need to write an essay, we're just going to cross that out. Next, circle words asking you to do something. Okay, well there's a word discuss, and it's telling us, so discuss something. That's asking us to do one thing. 
explain, there's another word asking us to do something, and support, final word asking us to do something. So we're just going to scan through, find any word asking us to do something, and we're going to circle it. Next, draw an arrow to what the word is asking you to do. So discuss, what is discuss asking you to do? It's, you're asking you to discuss an important decision. Okay, so we're going to draw an arrow to that. Next, explain, what are we explaining? the decision and how it affected you. So we're discussing an important decision, we're explaining how it affected you, and finally support with details and examples. So let's rewrite the prompt listing what we need to do. One, discuss an important decision. Two, explain how it affected me. And three, support details and examples. So support what the point one and two and give lots of details and examples. So basically we took a big prompt with a lot of words, we clarified what we need to do and then we rewrote it and then you can reference what you've rewritten and this will help you from getting distracted and having to spend a lot of time rereading the prompt because these types of exams are usually timed so it's important to break that down. Okay next we have to brainstorm possible answers. So we've got the three things we're going to be doing in this essay, discussing an important decision, explaining how it affected us, and we're supporting that with details and examples. So I'm just going to write down some possible topics. Uh, maybe I, I, I'm thinking well I'm doing a college entry exam so choosing a college that's an important decision I had to make. Um, getting married that was an important decision I had to make. Uh, moving to Mexico that was an important decision. So I just write down some possible topics and then I'm gonna pick one. So let's just go with moving to Mexico. So in a brainstorm you're then going to basically free write. You're gonna come up with every detail you can think of that may contribute to the story. So for example I think about what I learned, what it's like being in another country. I thought about why I went, adventure, culture, it helped me with employment in the States. Then I ta thought about the language and learning Spanish, getting a job, where to live, safety. So once I've brainstormed all, all the uh, details of my story about moving to Mexico, I then have to choose the order of my response. Okay, so we have our details and we, we need to discuss it now, but you need to have a certain plan about how you're going to go about it. You don't want to write your essay in the order in which you thought of the details, and that's very important. As you free write, your mind is going to sort of wander and you're going to come up with all kinds of great details, but again, the order in which you think of it is maybe not the best order for telling the story. So that's why you have to then reorder all the things you wrote down. So for example, I'm just going to write a one next to why did I go because I think that's an important uh, part of starting the essay. I need to explain why I went. So then I'm going to talk about um, the adventure, the culture, help with employment in the States. Next I'm going to write about what I had to do. I had to learn Spanish. Then it seems like a good idea to talk about where I decided to live because I've already talked about why I wanted to go, how I prepared by uh, learning the language, and then I had to figure out where I wanted to live. So that seems like the logical point to go in the essay. And then four, okay, once I got there I needed to get a job. I'm going to talk about that. And I'm deciding not to talk about how to interview because I think it's probably not going to help my essay. So at any point here, if as you're choosing the order of your response, just draw a line through an idea that's maybe not going to work out so well. So in talking about getting a job and where to look, uh, I'm telling part of the story. How I decided to interview is not really critical to the story, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, then safety. I need to think about what to avoid. Cartels, kidnapping, that was some of my ideas. But I'm going to put a line through cartels. It's It's probably a side topic. It's not really important to my story so I don't want to include that so I'm going to draw a line through it. And then finally, logically, what did I learn? So that's that's the order in which I'm going to write my essay. And I'm just going to write numbers next to the topics or the points. And you can do this in a row. You don't have to um, do it in a circle around the topic. It's whatever works for you. But it's important to put a little bit of thought here before you start writing into the order of your response. Okay, and then you have to write the essay. Once you've written the essay, you have to ensure that it's relatively error-free. And you do this by rereading your essay. It's, it's amazing how many people will spend an hour or almost 45 minutes writing an essay and then less than 10 seconds rereading it. They basically just check to make sure their name is correct and then they turn it in. But if you have any extra time, you need to at least reread your essay and look for grammatical errors, punctuation errors. Um, but try and plan a little bit of time into your 
strategy so that you have adequate time to do this at the end because you might need to erase a sentence or something. Hopefully you won't have to. If you follow the strategies I've just outlined, um, there should be a minimal amount of things you need to redo, but the odds are very good you're going to spell something wrong or you're going to put some incorrect punctuation. So you have to read it before you turn it in. That's so important. And it may even help to read it out loud. It certainly does for me, but of course you're probably in an exam setting. But just read it quietly under your breath. And then once you've read it, you found what you can, turn it in. So that's it. Uh, my YouTube channel is HS High School Language Arts. Uh, thumbs up if you found this helpful. Um, it is important to study this. It's important to practice it because, as I said at the beginning, more and more uh, employers are using this. So the sooner you start practicing now, the better the chance you'll have. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.